Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. This time for Johnny. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. As we now get to the acclaimed, <laughs> beloved movie, Indiana Jones and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. No, obviously this is a film that's been hated on, which is funny because when it first came out, critics liked it. Even if you look at Rotten Tomatoes, it has a fresh rating, over 70%. A lot higher than the new one is getting, even though it's not out for a month, but I guess critics saw it early. Which usually critics see it a month early is because they think people will love it, but yeah, doesn't seem like that will be the case. But I've always enjoyed this film. I've always liked this film. I always thought this film was underrated. Does it have flaws? Sure. Is it perfect? No. But I think this is a, a fun, worthy sequel that does justice to the Indiana Jones character because it doesn't make him a loser. It makes him worthwhile one last adventure. Shia LaBeouf I don't think is that bad. I never did. It was wonderful to see Karen Allen again. It was wonderful that Indiana Jones got to be happy and got married. And you know what I've heard about the new film? That him and Marion are divorced. And he's a deadbeat loser dad. Because, you know, there has been enough of those in movies today. Fuck that shit. But, if it's a pay request, so I'll, I'll see the film. I don't think it comes out until like June 30th or something. <clears throat> but I'll pause at the beginning for those who want to follow along. 3, 2, 1, pressing play. Lucas Film Limited. This is when Kathleen Kennedy was only getting coffee for people. Came out 2008, which was a pretty cool year for movies, just... Oh, you have the old Paramount logo. Because the same year you had Rambo 4, which I saw that in the theater. I saw this in the theater as well. And yes, I don't need, you know, CGI gophers. I don't need, you know, the other CGI stuff. But despite those flaws I have with it, there's a lot to enjoy. Like the rest of this is a great scope. Steven Spielberg. Maybe the last Steven Spielberg film I truly loved. Yeah, the music, of course, gives a full aura of the 1950s. God, watch this on Blu-ray, just how beautiful the cinematography can be. Damn. And how refreshing it's not the Nazis once again. Now it's, you know, the Russians and the Cold War and all that aspect. Because the you know we we already had the Nazis the first one and then Last Crusade. I like that it was a cult in the second film. So I didn't refresh and have something a bit different. Now, I've always been a fan of the Indiana Jones films. My favorite is Red as a Lost Ark, and I've saw those films all the time back in the, the days of VHS and then DVD and so forth, but always love the characters. My favorite Harrison Ford character. I do like Harrison Ford as an actor, not just for Indiana Jones, but regarding Henry, Six Days, Seven Nights, Air Force One, The Fugitive is a great movie. A witness is a good one so I've always been a fan of his and like I said it's always been my favorite character now I know Spielberg was hesitant on doing a sequel I know people say he never should have and this film doesn't exist but again I don't think this film spits on the character 
as we're in Nevada, 1957. It just doesn't. I mean, the character is treated, number one, not realistic, but, you know, showcasing his age. He's gotten older, he's gotten rustier, but he still has some gusto. And at this point, Harrison Ford was about in his 60s, and that was pushing it in terms of what he could do. So he's like, hey, you're pushing it, dude. We'll take the leap with you. Now that he's 80 years old, now you're just insulting the audience and going, okay, this 80-year-old guy is going to be able to do all these things. It's going to be live CGI doubles, which you don't have. I mean, yes, there are doubles. There's doubles from back in the first film. You think it was Harrison Ford doing the whole thing in the truck sequence and going under the truck and being dragged? And the close-ups it was, but the others was... Was it, uh, was it Terry Leonard or the other guy? <laughs> I do like this character, sort of the going back and forth. Is he a traitor? Is he not a traitor? I thought the actor did a job. And what a wonderful way to introduce your character. You have the hat. You don't see his face. We haven't seen him since 1989. So, almost 20 years. Well... Yeah, almost 20 years. We have the shadow, the silhouette. Still not seeing his face. And then the, we'll go and get the reveal. <laughs> not as easy as it used to be. <laughs> Put your hands down. You're embarrassing us. <laughs> like that is a great way to reveal your your main lead character. And admitting, yes, we're a bit older and and so forth, but he still has a bit of that gusto. And still keep those sound effects of those slaps and punches. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said drop dead, comrade. <laughs> I also love that camera work, where's that sort of pan to the f hand going to the fist. I don't know why, they just that's a little Spielberg touch. I don't know how else they explain it. Now you have, and I'm bad with names, Kate Blanchett as the Russian villain here. <clears throat> Which I don't think she did a bad job. She's a good, capable actress. I mean, people, I mean, I, lo I like the villains in Last Crusade, but people act as if those are you know, remarkable villains either. I mean, they work well for the story in Last Crusade, but, I mean... I dare them to tell me their names. <laughs> tell me the bad guys' names of Last Crusade and don't uh, look it up. And they worked fine for what they needed to do, but. I think Indiana Jones like, laughs at her or something. <laughs> <laughs> you hard man to read, Dr. Jones. Ouch. And people got so mad about the plot of this movie. They got so mad about it. I mean, you know, you're fine with a damn arc that opens up and melts people's faces. You're fine with magic stones that deal with and then a cult that will rip your heart out but you'll still be alive 
and soup that you drink and controls your fucking mind. Did we forget that and Temple of Doom? Indiana Jones literally got mind controlled? And he had you burn to wake up? Like, you're fine with the damn night being in a damn cave for a thousand, you know, how many years? But, you know, this was too far out there. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I love the idea. I love the story of this. Because this would be like if they did a comic book of Indiana Jones, which they have done, this would be the kind of plot that would be in it. And that's what Indiana Jones were. You know, serials, pulpy comic books. You know, and people forget that. And again, the characters were. Indiana Jones is front and center. He's showing his age, but he's having this one last great adventure. You know, Karen Allen, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, I forget this actor's name behind him. John Hurt. Yeah, here Indy using his wit, using his smarts. I want to figure out where the box is that's magnetized. <clears throat> I will say it's kind of cool that this happens to be the same, uh, well, not the same, but it's a warehouse where now the, uh, or maybe it's the, yeah, the same warehouse that the Ark is in. Would you say, you know, the rewatch of the first film, go, hmm, I wonder if you had a chase scene in this. That would be interesting. <laughs> It'd be like a big maze and... Yeah, that soldier had pliers right then there. What did he do? Pull him out of his ass? And then what's ironic is this film, you know, it's two hours. Like two hours and two minutes. And that's, you know, probably like ten minutes of credits. So it'd be technically under two hours. But then this new film, gotta be like two and a half hours. Because every fucking film now has to be like two and a half hours, two hours and forty minutes. Not every film has to be that. <laughs> like I said, I still do not understand why this film gets so much hate. If you're... Saying a film is not perfect is very different from hating the film. Very, how this very rarely any fucking films that are perfect. Let's be honest. I like Temple of Doom, but I'm so 50-50 on Willy. I could deal with her more than others, but the times her streaming does get on your nerves. And I perfectly understand people hating the character vehemently. I could deal with her, and I like the actress, Kate Capshaw, but, you know, sometimes her streaming can be a bit much. I like that little detail, like the dog tags as they're tearing it or being pulled to it. Now, of course, like, well, how powerful is that magnet? If those are being pulled, could other things be pulled? Like, wouldn't there be guns being pulled to it? It's all sorts of little things and questions that can occur with any of this type of stuff. On the side guys are like the Rocky from the Rocketeer. Where's the rocket? Or how it could be a damn bomb. I Maybe mean, if you've seen the film you know what it is, but I 
I, yeah, I just find it funny, like, what people believe and don't believe, and what's ridiculous and not ridiculous. Again, magic stones and fluid that will control your mind, and nights that are, you know, over a hundred years in a damn cave is perfectly sensible, but a uh, nice whip. Oh, and then he gets fucked over. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That reveal. That wide shot. Of it. Damn, Mac. I, yeah, I thought this actor did a good job with this sort of, <laughs> this type of character. I like Ike. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, get the fuck out of Dodge in the... Great whip. Oh shit. There's Indiana Jones. Like, there's Harrison Ford right there, right there. You see him crashing right there. Is that CGI double? Damn, I thought that was closer. I didn't show him a bit of his age to not make, you know, hey, we understand he's 60 years old and it's a bit ridiculous, but I like the camera tracking through it. CGI, you know, actually that didn't look too bad. Uh, there's the Ark of the Covenant. That didn't look too bad, that explosion. I, I just watch on Blu-ray. It actually didn't look too bad. <coughs> you don't know him. You don't know him. <laughs> ah, nice. All the trucks just bashing into each other. <laughs> And there's actually a lot of practical stuff in this. A lot of good stonework. That was a nice shot because you saw he was Harrison Ford coming down. Ah, this is really cool. And fuck you! <laughs> Great swing. Damn. Now he's avoiding all this chain business. I don't care what anyone says. This is a fun opening sequence. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you don't fuck with Harrison Ford here. Roasted, get the marshmallows out. This reminds me of like Terminal Velocity with Charlie Sheen with the whole rocket car thing. <laughs> Again, I don't know why you need CGI gophers. That was stupid. Edit that stuff out. If like I had control, I could edit stuff. I would edit all the little gopher stuff. I like. It doesn't like ruin the film, it's just, you know, it's that neat, it's a little stupid thing, it's silly. <laughs> like I said, I've seen this, that kind of thing done before, there was a film called Terminal Velocity in the 90s with Charlie Sheen and was it Natasha Kinsky and they were in this sort of, on a track and it's like rocket car, only they had the jet is the things ready to collide and explode.
I'm still fun a piece of business with that you know, escapism factor and what does he have to go through next? Out of the frying pan into the fire repeatedly. That's still a long ways off. Now, this is a scene that people absolutely fucking hate and despise. I understand how ridiculous it is. Now, whether it's because I, I deal with more leniency, maybe because I like that the buildup of it. Like, I love, like, the realization for the audience like he's in this town and he's trying to figure out you know, get help and Harrison Ford's reaction his slow realization as to what the hell's going on and that sort of build up of oh shit it's howdy doody time I was like what the fuck <laughs> and that was the whole point of course is this oh shit reaction for the audience and how the hell is Andy going to get out of this how the hell is Andy Angels going to get out of this now perhaps you just you know understandably I just understand people going you know what maybe they just made it too big it was too big of an obstacle for Andy to get out of and I wonder if it ended with just the rocket car and then he gets away and if you just cut this whole scene out I wonder if people would have calmed down on the movie because they would never they couldn't use that whole newt the fridge thing I do wonder like if you had the same exact film and you just cut out this one scene is the rocket car leads into boom 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 it might have been, you know, it might have calmed people down. But I can't help but, I still like this scene as ridiculous as it is, I will admit. I like the model work there, the explosion of the, the ship. And of course, even if you survive the explosion, the way this thing's thrown about and bopping like a damn tin can would have broken your neck and every fucking bone in your body so I don't know now part of me is like it's so audacious it's so ridiculous I almost love it for the just because of just how ridiculous it is if you're that close to a mushroom cloud you probably don't get a lot of radiation sickness too <laughs> just saying I know the whole scene is absolutely ridiculous, but I don't know, like, when I first saw it, it just... Ah, uh, there goes Indy. I think I like the visuals for the most part of it. I mean, I would say that the weakest was the fridge flying through the air and stuff, but... Again, I just... Maybe because I look at a lot of the Indiana Jones in such a different... And I understand, I mean, there are movies that you... There are fucking ten scenes like that in Fast and Furious movies, and so many people give so many of those films the pass. Like, come on now. I can you count at least ten scenes in Fast and Furious films. I mean, they went into fucking space. <clears throat> Although not a lot of people praise that, to be honest, <laughs> going to the space part.
I like the idea that Indiana Jones, you know, that he was in part of this pulp sci-fi history. I guess for people like religious fantasy, however you want to call it, is fine, but sci-fi fantasy is too ridiculous. But I think also then you get into the fact that, you know, what do you believe in religiously? To me, I'm... Maybe I'm agnostic. Maybe that's what it is. Like, I... I I want to believe, but I don't, but I, I want to, uh, maybe that's the word, I don't know. I know when you say some of these stories out loud, it's like, oh, the whole sea parted? Sounds a bit ridiculous, and no one's done that in the past, you know, 50 years that I know of. <laughs> Who who are you to the men in black? Now Sally Denholm Elliott had passed away, who played Marcus. And I think Spielberg asked Sean Connery, but Connery said no because I'm just enjoying my vacation. Which is too bad. I would like to have seen Sean Connery in this. I think that would have been very cool, but eh. I know he wanted to. I didn't enjoy his retirement. But, I mean, it may have worked out for the best because you already had quite a few people. You have Indy, then you got The Sun, then you got Karen Allen, and then John Hurt's character. So, you already had a decent amount of people there. Ah, oh, there's Denel Elliott on the, the painting there. I didn't notice that painting before, actually. I remember there's a, a picture Indy has, but I didn't notice that painting before. And this is also a nice little bit where, you know, people get blackballed into thinking you're a communist, all this other stuff. You know, the Red Steer. Who do you trust? All that jazz. that Which happened a lot in the McCarthy era. Reach the age where life stops giving us stuff and starts taking them away. See, that's a nice reflection of old age. That's why you don't need another one, because this already did that. The realization we're getting older, what's our future, what's our future going to entail. Andy loses his job. Nice little bit for his dad, Sean Connery. And now he he's the realization that he's a dad. He's not a deadbeat dad because he didn't know he had a son. And as soon as he has a son, like he knows, then he's very like, adamant to be a father. No, you're going back to school. <laughs> and Shia LaBeouf, like I never, I never got what people got so pissy about him. Transformer movies, I mean, it's Transformer films. Look at the way those fucking films are written. 
hey, play this character who yells, Optimus, Bumblebee, you know, 85 times, and your character has to yell at Bumblebee. I don't know if anyone could have played that character worth a shit like that. <laughs> Uh, John Hurt's character, actually. Now Shia LaBeouf, I mean, he had been a few, you know, quite a few films by this time. I mean, before this, he was a bit role in Dumb and Dumberer, and he was in this film called Holes. But of course, he got on Spielberg's radar because. He produced Transformers, which Shia LaBeouf starred in. I think Spielberg produced, like, the first two? I think after that, Spielberg's name was no longer attached to it. And then, Eagle Eye, Spielberg produced. Among, with a lot of us, I liked Eagle Eye. I think Eagle Eye is a fun popcorn movie. And then, of course, this, which I know Shia LaBeouf denounced this film... I think Harrison Ford, like, got, <laughs> called him an idiot or something. Like, what are you doing, kid? Lost City in the Amazon, El Dorado. Giant City out of solid gold. I mean, that alone would have been a, a fine enough adventure to go find the City of Gold, the El Dorado. And yes, you do hear, because uh, I'm on a farm, well, not a farm, but I'm in the middle of nowhere, and there are chickens and roosters around, if you hear that in the background. I don't think Shia LaBeouf does a bad job here. Like, what are people's beef with him? I guess people just don't like him, whatever. I've seen much worse upon worse fucking actors. John Cena. Look at fucking John Cena. That guy's a ten times worse actor than Shia LaBeouf. If I want to find stroll, it's you. Of course, uh, background, we have those 1950s clothing. Some pretty decent job by the, the costume department in the background there. Shit. Brought a knife to a gunfight. Joel College hit him hard, and then the girl hits him. Ah, uh, greasers versus college guys. <laughs> it's a brawl! 
Greaser fight! Greasers! Where's John Travolta? Who's Grease Lightning? Get the fuck out of there! <laughs> Still fine, like a some bitch over there, the fucking group. <laughs> and now, then compare this motorcycle bit of business to what you see in the fucking trailers for the the new film. Like you see the new film, the trailers, all the CGI manipulation and filters that you could clearly see as day and body double stuff here. You see, all done practical. And he just pulled it in there. Boom. Uh, nice stunt work from... Uh, I don't know who's doing the stunt there. That's Harrison Ford there. That nice up-close shot. Nice movements of the camera. Like, so far, all I've seen is real practical stuff. During this whole uh, chase sequence so far. All done for real in camera. But, of course, because it's going through all these parades, because we gotta look at the time period. Yeah, look how fucking digital it is. The ones that I remember being fairly digital was the bit in the jungle. But we'll see how that looks and when we get there. It's still showcasing the time period, but not being a CGI smorgasbord. Better dead than red. Yeah, get the fuck out of the way. There you go. Get him, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, not over yet. Really nice open, wide open shots here. Oh shit. <laughs> Man, those were some squeaky clean floors that glide all the way over there. I'll be a good archaeologist get out of the library. <laughs> but I'm enjoying watching this again. Like I said, this film is not that fucking bad. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I mean, it's like the, the only, they see the typical talking points that people just regurgitate through multiple articles because if you like the film, then that means, quote, you're an idiot and whatever names they want to give out. I just wonder how many of them have actually seen the film or when was the last time you actually saw the damn film? Well, I me, mean, I don't give a fuck. If I like the film, I'll say I like it. And if I hate the film, I'll say I hate it. I guess, in, true, in all fairness, they could feel the same way, just we have a difference of opinion. They just... I mean, it still has that fun adventure...
quality to it all. Of course, we have that classic map. We're going to Peru. Fly Pan American. Going to Mexico. I don't know why they felt they needed to make another Indiana Jones film. Just so fucking stupid, so fucking ridiculous. And then you got Kathleen Kennedy more in control. You have no Steven Spielberg involved. You have no George. Like people is all oh, so glad George Lucas isn't involved. Is it? Actually, I don't know if he's involved at all now. I think about because he sold Star Wars. He didn't sell Indiana Jones. I don't. I haven't heard George Lucas's name now. I think about it. Involved with the new Indiana Jones. Again, Spielberg's that involved. Well, this director... Does that... What has that director done to show he could do an Indiana Jones film? Yes. He did... Uh, was a Copland. Love Copland. He did Lodian. That's not Indiana Jones. Uh, fencing so we get a little bit of a uh, heads up about the fencing which will be showcased for later now if you love doing that don't let anyone tell you different So, you know, Indiana Jones is not being a fucking dick. He's not being an asshole. He's like, hey, do you love doing that? Okay, if you love doing that, go for it, man. And also, it didn't, this didn't feel like a regurgitation of the previous films. It felt like its own beast. There's still some really good, fun set pieces. I like the story. I like the artifact. The whole kingdom... The even the title, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, sounds good, sounds cool. Dial of Destiny? Dial 800? I don't give a fuck. How about that? There's your Dial of Destiny. The dial Dialysis of Destiny. Because there were so many stories, like, Indiana Jones trilogy ended in 89, there's so many stories of, like, if there was a fourth one, where could you go? And so many people threw out ideas like Atlantis, uh, I forget what other ideas they had. I mean, they've done video games. There was the Emperor's Tomb. There was the Staff of Kings. I remember reading ma magazines back in the day, like Cinescape. For those who remember that magazine. That, oh, possible ideas for Indiana Jones 4. And one of them was this UFO idea. And people didn't seem that pissy back then about it. Just like, okay, sure. Because some of that stuff is part of archaeology as well. I mean, they've, they've did a whole fucking thing called Ancient Aliens. 
Will you like or dislike that stuff on History Channel? And they even done that shit, ancient aliens and all that stuff, jazz. And yeah, I don't know why it's more ridiculous to think that of the millions of planets, maybe there's life out there than. Parting, you know, this guy with a staff parts the seas to get the fuck out of Dodge. Or he saw a burning bush that wasn't, you know, an acid trip or... So they found the grave, and here we have this uh, wide establishing shot. I will say another little nitpick is coming up is a little bit of a battle, and then he asks, "Are you a teacher? Like you're a teacher, part time?" I think the line reading was better in the trailer than it is in the movie. Again, if I could edit it, I would put that uh, line in the trailer the way he says it in it because in the trailer he's like part-time but in the movie is like part-time it's like a little like difference that again uh, in the trailer it sounded a little bit better like a bit more like finality to it part-time so Oh my god, ruined the film. 4 out of 10, Bret Hart style. It's a 4 out of 10 movie. Again, if I knew how to edit that stuff and keep it high def and put it on disc, I would do that stuff. But yeah, And Shia LaBeouf getting the shit down. He had no chance. Boom. Ooh, shit. Knock your fucking teeth out. Now, I'm trying to remember if, if oh, I like, wait a minute, I like this bit coming up where Indy sneaks up and does a right back to the motherfucker's throat. <laughs> I love this bit. Psych. <laughs> Ooh, I love that bit. <laughs> You're a teacher? <laughs> but still, I mean, I still believe Indy being a badass in this. Again, not a fucking decrepit, slow, tired, dippy dad, divorced. I didn't pay attention to my kid. What's it? Based on the trailers and the marketing and the clips and the reviews. For fuck's sake. Damn, walls breathing. Or having an orgasm, I don't know. All the wind's blowing, there's a skull. Well, I mean, you are in a cemetery, so... Skulls tend to be normal in a cemetery. Scorpions all around. <laughs> That's 
small one bites you. Don't keep it to yourself. <laughs> but I'm always I'm always been a sucker for these type of adventure type of movies ever since I was a kid. I think because just living vicariously through them. There's a part of me that wants to experience this kind of adventure. I mean, don't want the danger, but just the excitement and secret tunnels and passageways and treasure and all sorts of stuff. So, again, huge fan of the Indiana Jones films. The Alan Quartermain, and especially at Teen Solomon's Mines. And I don't mind the sequel, Alan Quartermain, The Lost City of Gold. Uh, National Treasure 1 and 2 I like, and I can watch. Of course, The Goonies, Firewalk with Chuck Norris is my favorite Chuck Norris film. Because it's like his lower budget is canon films, but you know, if it, Chuck Norris and Louis Dodge Jr. were the Indiana Jones type of movie, Sonny Landham is the bad guy. Oh, shit. <laughs> Come on, genius, bring the back. See, he has that same gusto, like, just same bravado, and it's still believable. Because, again, 60 and 80 are very different, you know, ages. Just like 20 and 40 are very different ages. And I don't know if the new film's going to be as big of a hit as they hope. And I mean, it's not, it's not like going to make a dollar. But... It might have a good opening weekend, but I don't think it's going to have legs, and I think it's going to disappoint. But who knows? I mean, there's been craft films that make a lot of money, too. You know it's crappy yet. Hey, if it proves me wrong, then good. I'm glad it proved me wrong. Creed 3 proved me wrong. I like Creed 3, and people were like, You can't like it. Like, yeah, I did. I like Creed 3. I'm cynical. I There's been a lot of dog shit out. Sorry. Not going to sugarcoat it. Damn, well preserved. The wrappings preserved them. Not anymore. That's a pretty decent effect. Uh, I thought that's a nice transition. Air does agree with him. <laughs> yeah, and now I got a knife of my own. Keep your switchblade. <laughs> Uh, okay, so he didn't keep it. <laughs> I, mean, I like that little shit. I don't want to keep borrowing yours. Okay, fine, I'll put it back. <laughs> I mean, I'm, why is old take He's not going to need it. Uh, type of conquistador. So is that mass made of gold as well? Thus for gold was legendary. Ah, uh, magnetized. <laughs> I 
think you put him down now. The Crystal Skull. Which, I mean, there was the, a legend about Crystal Skulls. I mean, it's not like they just made this out of the fucking blue. And there's been zero, zero thing about it. Crystal's not magnetic, neither is gold. It's a good question. Why did he put it back where he found it? Ah, uh, that's why. <laughs> that answers your question. Put it back because he didn't want these motherfuckers to find it in this asshole two-faced prick Mac. Need a Mac attack. Ooh, ooh, you motherfucker. Fuck you, Mac. You two faced piece of shit. Fuck you on Mac. And he does break his nose. <laughs> and I know this after I've seen a lot. Uh, Ray was it Ray Winstone or God? I'm bowing names. I know I've seen this actor in quite a few other movies, and he usually does a good job. Very capable actor. Fuck you and your Vulcan haircut. She does kind of look like Tim Control in Star Trek VI, A Discovered Country. So that's that same type of haircut. And then, because she had the haircut, she also had it for a split second.
I kind of like that they didn't go with just aliens. They went the saucer men from Mars. Because something about that just sounds more 1950s to me. Saucer men from Mars. And that 50s era it made sense. Like, what was big in the 50s? You know, communism, the Russians, the Reds, McCarthyism. Who do you trust? Who's a traitor, not a traitor? That paranoia... And, you know, what was the big part of the 50s? Sci-fi, aliens, saucer men. Saucer, not saucer men. Men doing the saucer, you know. Or on the sauce and drunk as fuck, but no, saucer men. And also, they do have a bit of disbelief for Indy, because at this point, why would he disbelieve religious artifacts he saw he was part of the Ark of the fucking covenant that melted a bunch of fucking nazi faces he saw a knight that was alive for hundreds of years so if there's another religious artifact there should be no doubt no hindrance no disbelief it would look stupid but because it's saucer men from mars it made sense why indy would disbelieve this Uh, John Hurt. <laughs> yeah, you look at it, bitch. You don't want to fucking want this whole goddamn valley. I don't know why that skull reminds me of something you would see in uh, Temple of Doom. Where you see like those skulls and it's like candle in each eye. Which I mean again, that had stuff that you would drink and you would again be pretty much mind controlled by the cult. But that's that's not ridiculous, but you know. This was too ridiculous. Just depend on your per, you know, personal preferences. People pick and choose. I do the same thing too. Like I said, we're all hypocrites. I've always said, you know, humanity itself is a giant hypocrite. There's people who know it, and there's people who don't. But we're all hypocrites in some way, shape, or form. You can watch two films, and what two films would do the same thing but then you like one and dislike the other because uh, it doesn't bother me as much in this or there's other attributes you like so you let it go for this movie when you would not for the other movie <laughs> Tell you to break your nose. I think soon we're going to get Karen Allen.
<laughs> ah, here we go. Now, this is another great reveal. I'm smiling anyway. <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> I love Harrison Ford's reaction. It's such a genuine reaction. <laughs> it just the confu the excitement and just the confusion. Like they were just so back in step again. <laughs> well, so have I. <laughs> you looking for a date? <laughs> and that's why there's a, such a good ending to me as a fan. It's like the first time we see him in love, you know, we as an audience, I should say, is Marion. And who I still think, while I is the best of the love interest for Indiana Jones. So the fact that you know, they would get back together again was such a satisfying finale for the character. Like going off to the sunset was a wonderful shot in Last Crusade. But to get married to Marion and enjoy his retirement years and he now has his son and he thinks it passes the torch but it's like nah not quite. I got my hat, kid. This is my hat. Get your own hat. It's like you have your cake, you eat it too. You sense it past the torch, but not not quite. And it's still. You're not making the character a loser. You're not making the character a failure. You're not killing off the character. In fact, he is prevalent in the story. He's adamant in the story. He's commendable in the story. He's worthwhile in the story. And and I'm a big Karen Allen fan. I've always enjoyed her Raiders of the Lost Ark, Starman. Scrooged. I've always been a big Karen Allen fan. It was so great to see her again. And she wasn't in for just five minutes and disappears. She joins the adventure. I like the banter between the characters. But the whole bit with Indy's reaction. Oh, Marriott. That was so heartfelt and the little back and forth is like ah uh, that, that fits with the characters Fire it up.
And it's kind of made sense, you know, it's crazy that, you know, it, it had to take four films to enter Quitsand into the mix. Because Quitsand just seems like something that would have been typical in an Indiana Jones movie. Because, I mean, Quitsand... <laughs> as soon as he finds out as a son, why hell do you make him stay at school? He has always kind of this this, this look on his face that just makes it work. <laughs> and of course, that had to be a snake. <laughs> of course, it had to be a snake. <laughs> I thought this was a fun way to put the, the snake bit into it where he has to do the thing he doesn't want to do. <laughs> Damn, that's a sturdy snake didn't rip apart, rip in half. Got help. <laughs> Wait, all these bits that people just completely forget, completely don't ever mention, just like okay, this is you know, some CGI here, definitely. Well, I mean, I just, you know, they didn't really want to, you know, tear down a whole rainforest. I do understand that. <laughs> you buried him, I introduced you. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Double team on this motherfucker.
They warned you, honey. I love that Karen Allen smile. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, they were women, but they weren't you, honey. I think also because Raiders of Lost Ark is my favorite. This is like a nice follow-up to Ra Raiders of Lost Ark. So I think that's what I mean. Like the the way the characters are, the characters are interpreted, and uh... well, why is Karen Allen in the movie? She didn't need to be in the film. You don't need to breathe. How about that? Shut up. <laughs> Well, he finally got to fire that rocket he couldn't in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, shit. And of course, that's done CGI because that'd be too dangerous for people. Like, you know, I could let that go. You know, I like the idea behind it. It's definitely, you know, CGI heavy. Being nice to see he finally got to shoot that damn rocket. Like I said, the, he could in raise all Stark. Yeah, you drive yourself. Jump for joy, there you go. <laughs> Jonesy. <laughs> I don't know, just that girl. That's pretty. Hey, Mac. <laughs> and it's just bad at the Indian just beating the shit out of everybody, throwing people off the, the truck. It just. This satisfying as a fan, kicking ass, taking names. Again, how much of this you don't believe when the guy's eighty years old? I know it's weird to say believed. It's like, well, Matt, come on, like you, you could deal with the, the, uh, you know, newt the fridge, but you're talking about belief. I, I know it. It just, I don't know, the way my brain is. Now he says he's CIA. Whatever he can do to whoever he can appease. I think this is the shot I'm thinking here where it's it's definitely heavy CGI this whole scene here this whole bit with the background this is where you could tell the the CGI background a bit and that's why you know this part of the scene here just doesn't feel as effective compared with the the older films like the taint bit in Last Crusade or even you know the mine car has effects, a lot of effects in it as well, but still feels more tangible compared to the, like that's heavily CGI. That's not 
a great shot. This whole bit here with the, the fence and sword fight, I get the idea behind it, and... I, I mean, I think it's just too glossy in CGI. That is, it is noticeable in this. I was really noticing for the rest of for all the stuff prior, but it's this bit here with Shia LaBeouf and the fencing bit where the CGI is of the background is very prevalent. Oh shit. Damn shot, you didn't your ass whipped. You get ass kissed by a girl. <laughs> and this is my least favorite bit of the movie. I will say, as much as I praise the film, I absolutely hate this bit. This bit I would absolutely cut out. This whole bit with these monkeys and him swinging with the sea giant monkeys. The, this bit is more shitty to me than the, the fucking Nuke the Fridge stuff. So, I'm not going to be kissing this movie's ass and everything. This this scene fucking sucks. I hate the fucking teen of the monkeys, Tarzan shit. That's fucking stupid. And the roosters outside, they fucking feel the same way. As when it started the fencing bit between Shia and Kate Blanchett, it's that's when you saw a lot more CGI and from then to like here is is I for me the weakest part of the movie. Is that I don't give a fuck about this goddamn monkey bullshit. It, it does look fucking stupid. Dos Vidania. Fuck you, bitch. You should have your whip and whip her in the face. Yeah, monkeys, get the fuck out of there now. <laughs> and yeah, that was heavy CGI as well. I mean, obviously, because you know you don't want a car trying to roll over your cast, and it could absolutely hurt them. But then we got the fucking crazy ass ants. Big ass ants too. Like this being CGI, I can understand because. Of course, the, the question is, should you even do the scene in the first place and just not have it at all? That's always, of course, a fair assessment. These, uh... <laughs> hungry, hungry ants. But I know that, this just doesn't bother me as much.
God, these roosters are shut up. Apparently they are hating the sea jaw as well. That was a nice left punch. There you go, Marion. Get him the fuck out of there. Yeah, the ants are steering fucking clear away from that. They're like, fuck this shit, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, leave this guy the fuck alone. I said, I don't mind the whole ant business. I, it just, for some reason, it just doesn't bother me. Maybe because in a weird way it kind of reminds me a little bit of one of my favorite X-Files episodes, Darkness Falls. Which had the, the killer bug stuff in it. From like season one, I believe. Ah, some nice haymaker punches. Ooh. Nice elbow. Ooh, good haymaker. There you go. Two piece in the biscuit. <laughs> Uh, not the ear, man. Not the ear. You're not going to bite my ear. You're not... Ooh, nice haymaker. Oof. Don't take off my hat, you motherfucker. Now he's going to be pissed. Take off my goddamn hat. Ooh. Kind of like the, the big guy in the, the first movie. Ooh, nice kick to the face. <laughs> Ooh, did the blood out of the mouth too. Nice haymakers. <laughs> Ooh. I actually like that shot there where it's like going all around and into his mouth. They don't find you a new home. There you go. <laughs> Interesting way to kill off a bad guy. Don't steal his fucking hat. Oh, the skull. Okay, I was wondering why they ran away, but that's why. Like I said, the fencing bit of that scene, I, I get the idea behind it, but I don't know, I just wasn't really big on it. The the execution of the effects, uh, and then the... Uh, I like to give Marion... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Good job, Marion. Ah, <laughs> uh, three times it drops. That's three waterfalls. How if I don't put it in reverse? We're driving on the fucking river. Oh shit. Well, you got, you stayed in there one time. I don't know if you're going to do it the second time.
It means one, two. <laughs> Kind of reminds me a bit of that scene in the Temple of Doom when they're going down the fucking mountain. Just like they go from the plain to the mountain, then they go off the mountain and they slide all the fucking way down. That's the thing, like, that's, you could buy that in a little raft out of a fucking airplane. They, uh, they're down a the mountain like a bullet and then you fall down like this type of height of waterfall and they land and they don't even and it's like a fucking little raft that big like a little rubber raft <laughs> you let her go Mary let her go Like I said before, like there there are nitpicks I have with the film. At times, there's too much CGI with the way of modern films of today. You know, the whole you know, don't need the monkeys and and stuff. And damn, there's only like half an hour left. And plus, that's includes the end credits. So this film goes at a good pace, too. And now we're getting to the, the crux of the civilized, you know, the their findings. The crux of their findings. And again, when this film came out, there were good reviews by credits. I mean, again, it had over, at like, what, 77% of Ron Tomatoes, give or take. So, this was not a hated movie, and, oh, this movie sucks. It wasn't. It just truly wasn't. But, after, you know, this and that, that and this, it just became that for some reason. And I don't agree. I don't know why but it just it did it just flat out did and yeah but I don't think it's that bad I just I don't think it's that bad yeah what is it ah oh, there it is a bit of that business there I mean, how many legends have there been where, you know, did some someone from the sky or the gods were the gods, if gods were someone from the sky, I mean, hell, they've done movies like Stargate, you know, Stargate and other movies have uh, approached that idea. That's a nice looking set. Like the set design, the lighting, and that. Oh shit. Oh yeah, I forgot about these guys. I wonder, do they just live there? And just, you know, young guard duty, live in this hole in case someone comes in. Nope, nobody came. Okay. Go take a leak, get something to eat, work out so you can be in shape. Now it's your turn. Oh 
shit. It's just come out of the fucking woodwork. Damn fucking bolos everywhere. That's how they got away before. There you go. I don't know, I like the look of this whole, uh, uh, mold, not molded, but, you know, plants edging out of the, you see, you see plants everywhere, showcase how ancient it is, how the growth has spread throughout this structure, this temple. Oh, it just has a classic adventure aesthetic and look to it. And you know, John Hurt's character, like, they don't make him annoying or irritating. And, I mean, he's a good actor, too. May he rest in peace, you know, from Alien. And you know, he was in, what, I think he was in Hellboy. Yeah, Hellboy with Guillermo del Toro. Fuck out way back. Got away. <laughs> Go get your own. This kind of a neat little thing where you let the the weight of it out, weighted down by the sand, and I'll open up a little bit here. Yeah, I know there's a lot of, uh, again, I like the, I like the Indiana Jones trilogy. Temple of Doom is fun. So is Last Crusade. And I think for most, Last Crusade was the last. And that's all they needed. I can understand that. But again, I think this is a fun enough adventure that, like I said, treats the characters well. Which is rare nowadays when you see how character. Uh, by the way, I love this idea of the cascading staircase. The fact that there's these wide enough stands so you could like fall through. I like the idea of this casting staircase of oh shit, you gotta try to get down as soon as you can. And thankfully they made it far enough down. Then I'd get impaled. So like when back in the other one where Indy told hold this now Shy is like to hold this. <laughs> so it's not the end of the movie, you can't kiss yet. <laughs> 
but yeah, like, they like said, I like the Indiana Jones trilogy. Done a lot of comic books, video games. I haven't played much of the video games. I've. I know there's the Emperor's Tomb. Like I said, there's the Staff of Teens. There's. I swear there's another one. I forget what it was called. And, uh. Let's see. I know there's one for PC that dealt with Atlantis or Point and Click Adventure game. Harrison Ford didn't do any of the. Of course, this guy here being a two faced prick again. He's the one leaving these clues. <clears throat> Tractors, I should say. But. I was going to say, uh. I played a little bit of that Super Nintendo game, Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures, which is, you know. Super Nintendo, kind of like Super Star Wars, where you're going through levels of the first three movies. Never beat it, though. I did play a little bit of that. Of course, these are the Atari games. Raiders of Lost Ark. And uh, Nintendo had Temple of Doom. And... What was it? Uh, two versions of Last Crusade. Which I, uh, I've i seen people play. They didn't seem that uh, fun to be. One was more of like a platformer and the other was like a bunch of like little mini missions. But you have to do them. The game doesn't tell you. You have to do them in a certain order. Just like one of the Nintendo games like, oh, here's you on the ship. And then here's a puzzle where you have to... Figure out this puzzle before you, the fire gets to you in the cave, and here's you battling people on the tank. But it's like if you do it in this order, then the puzzle's gonna be a lot harder. If you do it in this, this, uh, I don't know how the hell they explain it. The game doesn't tell you that you're supposed to play the levels in a certain order. I've seen people play, they look shitty. I wouldn't have mind getting the PlayStation 2 game. I think the Emperor's Tomb is on PS2 as well. I would like to get that one day. Try it out. I have a PS2 over there. <clears throat> there I'm surprised there has not been like a... <clears throat> with the success of Uncharted, that there's never like a... Indiana Jones game in the style of the Uncharted games. I know there's that commercial you can find on YouTube where Harrison Ford apparently he was playing Uncharted. It was getting really excited about, but you know how much of that it was acting and hey, I'm excited for the money they're paying me. <laughs> I, I doubt Harrison Ford gives a shit about video games, but he gave me a check and I did okay, sure. <laughs> but no. I do have a PS4, uh, which has the Uncharted games on it, but just never had a chance to play it. There was someone that said, oh, one day I'm going to pay you to do playthroughs of them. That's why I bought that, and then that never happened, so... Maybe one day. Really nice looking room. Do yeah, I like the set design? <laughs> so what are you a triple agent? I just lied about being a double agent. <laughs> a hive mind, huh?
You know, in a way, is this time of factor where the bad guys kind of, the main bad guys kind of get themselves killed. And, mostly. I mean, Temple of Doom. Well, in a way, it's like their own greed kind of become their undoing. You know, in the first one, they're adamant of opening the Ark, despite the warnings, and they get themselves melted or burnt up or exploding. The second film, you can make the argument, but... You know, he's holding on to those stones, same with as Indy, and the guy won't let go, and burns his hand and falls to his death. The third one, the guy's adamant to choose and drink, and he chose poorly. And then this one, she's adamant of getting the, the knowledge, the power, but uh, they're like, fuck that. She wants more knowledge, but her brain can't handle it. <clears throat> I like the look of the the crystal crystal skeletons. It's fairly unique. Sort of that see through. <clears throat> of course, you find out it's a spaceship, but you get the fuck out of Dodge. Which is greed becomes his undoing, Mac. Interdimensional beings. I guess that was kind of their way of, uh, well, they're not aliens, they're interdimensional beings, whatever the fuck. Yeah, we don't want to go that way either. And being too greedy. That's what he gets for being too greedy. And her being greedy in another way. <clears throat> Can you see your grave? Can you see your death? And that's Indy, you know, despite all the treachery, he's still trying to help. Because he's a good dude. I like the idea that the more each one, it becomes more and more complete and more and more physical. A lot of heavy CGI here. There you go. You wanted it, you got it. And the alien's like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I like the look of the alien. I, sort of that gray alien classic look.
Now, of course, the reason for a lot of the CGI is to not put the, the actors in danger. I can understand that, but it is a bit too CGI for me. That's why, I mean, I've said, like, I think the first three films are better. I do. But I, you know, I think this film is, I like the ideas behind it. I like the adventure aspect. I like the, the way the characters interact and utilized. I think Indy is treated with respect, and I think still think it's a fun, entertained popcorn adventure. And hell, I mean, there's a lot of movies I like that have dodgy CG. Mortal Kombat from 95, Deep Rising from 1998, I mean, The Relic, there's a few dodgy CGI bits. I mean, there's Marvel movies, Iron Man, Captain America films, you know, that have a lot of CGI in them, so... A lot of movies like that I can like that still have that stuff. It, uh, like this, I like the idea, the the look of this old classic UFO saucer. That just streams like 1950s to me, and I think that kind of looks pretty cool, actually. Moment frozen in time. And there you go. See, you didn't sh see it shoot up into the sky. It just... Again, dimensions. And the whole temple, you know, remains are buried. Flooded out. Like a broom to their footprints. And now that he's no longer under control, John Hurt is more got his mind back. Treasure wasn't gold, it was knowledge. Knowledge wasn't a treasure. <laughs> That's a nice nod to Sean Connery as well. Somewhere your grandpa is laughing. <laughs> Junior. Like that's a nice ode to to the past as well. Associate Dean. And this has like a nice finality to it. He's now going to be the Dean. Maybe once while we're going on an adventure, but... He gets married. He's going to settle down. Fuck that pass of the torch shit. I'm still mine. You may be my son, but I'm still Indiana Jones, motherfucker. And Shia LaBeouf, like, he's with the story, but he's not trying to take over. He's not trying to be the new Indiana Jones. He's not trying to be the new... I'm going to take over... You know, I'm not trying to surpass you. I'm not trying to say I'm better than you. I'm not trying to say that I'm... 
you know, you're nothing and I'm I'm somebody and all this political bullshit or woke bullshit or sexism bullshit or deadbeat dad syndrome. There's no deadbeat dad syndrome in this movie. None. Maybe the only positive I could maybe get is that when this film comes out and it's dog shit, which people could tell is dog shit, people realize, you know what, this film isn't that fucking bad. See, I love this. Like, the typical would be like, is it passing the torch? <laughs> This is my hat. You're my son, but I'm still Indiana Jones. I love that bit. To me, that is the perf that is Indiana Jones. Nah. And yet the great score. The two are married, which is a great follow-up to the first movie, culmination of them together. And now in the new one, either Marion is dead or she's fucking di they're divorced and of course. Because everything has to be fucking downbeat, pessimistic, Luke Skywalker is a loser and he fucking went to a goddamn island with titty milk, with you know, alien titties, and all this other shit. Han Solo got to be the deadbeat dad. And then he dies, and then fucking, of course, you know, Leia dies, just Terry Fisher died. Luke Devereaux, if you were a soldier, becomes a fucking zombie again, and he's a fucking loser villain, then he dies. Dante from Clerks 3, for the Clerks films, his wife and kid fucking die in a car accident, and then he's a, he realizes he's a loser, he'll always be a loser, so he has a heart attack, and then he gives up on life, just what's the fucking point, and somehow that's a great way to end your fucking trilogy, Kevin Smith. Just, god damn. Again and again and again. Do I think they'll kill off Indiana Jones? Maybe not. I don't know, maybe he'll go back in time and his older self would disappear, but we'll see his younger self. Or... I don't fucking know. It's just unneeded. This is, a, to me, a great way to end it. I think this is a worthy sequel. I still really enjoy this film. I still think, again, aside from the nitpicks I said, it holds up fairly well. I don't think this deal is it's not as bad as people fucking made it out to be. That's just my opinion. So that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.